How's it going, good people? This video got a, another TV to work on. Uh, the person I fixed a TV for previously told somebody else about my work and said, hey, give him a call. So I got another TV to work on. This TV is actually different than the previous TV issue that I had. Uh, this issue is that the TV does power on and everything works for the most part. Let me go ahead and show you. All right, so we have the TV here. It is a Hisense Android TV. And if I can get it turned on, uh, the customer was not able to find the remote, but all of the stuff that I researched online said you kind of need the remote to do the resetting of the TV. Uh, but basically what happens is you turn the TV on, as you see here, and once it gets past this screen, um, now mind you, I've already diagnosed this at the customer's house as well, but I just want to show you for the record on the steps that I'm going to try to take to diagnose this again a little bit further and to fix the TV as well. Um, so yeah, the TV does power on backlight perfectly fine. And as you see stuff comes up and then it does that. No input, no nothing just goes black, comes back again and then it'll do it again. I think. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, this is weird. Because previously it would go, it would come on, go out, come back on again, go out, and it would continuously do that until it quit working. Ah, there we go. All right. So it went out again, and then usually this time it will go out and it will stay out until it's the... I'm assuming there's like a worker, background worker on the TV that monitors the activity of the TV. And when it sees stuff not, when it sees it not doing anything, it shuts it off as a kind of a way to let you know something's wrong. And so eventually that'll do that. All right. So now I'm going to go to the computer. I need to get the model number off of the back of the TV and see if there's any firmware updates. And what I'm going to attempt to do is actually to reload the Android TV firmware onto this TV um, because like I say, hardware wise, it works perfectly fine. And I think it's really just a software update that got applied, but did not succeed in finishing that update. So I'm going to just redo the update and see if that works and addresses the issue. I got the serial number off of the TV and I put it in, I went to the Hisense website and I put it in, as you see here, brought up this page. And then down here are the, or is the file to download to do the firmware and software. Over here, there are instructions. It said to read the instructions first, so I did. That brought me to another PDF to make sure that, uh, you know, with the steps of what to do and how to do things. Um, that being said, going to follow those steps listed here with loading i've already downloaded it and extracted it to a jump drive the download file that is or the firmware update so next will be to go and plug that in power the tv on and let it do its thing oddly enough i was able to get it to stay on by going to the menu on the tv now i have a hisense tv so i was able to use my hisense tv remote on this hisense tv as you see there Hisense. Um, so I was able to, once I got to the menu, uh, the screen stayed on, which is very interesting. So it may, it makes me think something with the home screen has something to do with it, but I could be wrong. All right. So what it says to do is to go into the menu and then you scroll down to device preferences. Then you go down to about and then system update. And then upgrade from USB and the USB is already plugged into the back of the TV. And then you get an option here. It says upgrade from USB upgrade. I mean, excuse me, reboot or later. So let's go ahead and do reboot. So I'm going to let this do what it does and see what happens after it gets done upgrading. All right. So originally going from the menu did not get it to do the update. So I had to use the alternative step which was to turn the TV off and then turn the TV on pressing and holding the power button. And then eventually it came back on and it came back up to this screen. So I'm gonna let it do what it does. 
it says about five to eight main eight five to eight minutes for it to do the update, install all the files and everything else in nature. So I'm gonna let it run and then we'll continue with the video. It has gone from checking to installing and I'm letting it run. It's not blooming blazing fast, but hey, it is doing the update. So hopefully this will address the issue that it is having with the screen just going black. That being said though. Uh, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe because it is a tech-related video. And granted, these type of videos are the exception. Normally, I don't get many requests to repair TVs or even diagnose TVs. Uh, but because I have these requests coming in, I figure, hey, why not go ahead and talk about them in case you may have the same TV or a similar, similar model TV with the same issue. As always, if you haven't, drop a comment down below of if you have this issue what TV are you having to get with? Is it a Hisense? Is it a different brand? And uh, the TV is now installing the updates and we'll let that continue to run. It's about halfway there now. The update completed. The problem is though that now the TV will not power on. I contacted Hisense support and in discussing with them, I was like, yeah, I got this TV. The TV would go black, you know, like you turn it on, it runs for 30 seconds to a minute and then just go black. And then I applied the update because I thought it may have been a software defect or a software that didn't get installed correctly. And now it doesn't power on at all. So they checked with, uh, you know, checked whatever they had to check from their end. And basically they were like, well, you probably shouldn't apply the update. Um, and the reason being is because of the fact the motherboard was already on its way out based upon that screen going black, how it was doing. However, applying the update kind of basically expedited that process. And that's why it won't power on now. That being said, uh, they did say the resolution to this particular problem was to get a replacement main board and install that. So for context, let me show you the inside of this TV. Now I already have the back cover taken off. Like there's a smaller cover and then there's a larger cover. So the smaller cover here, this is the power supply. This is the right speaker. That's the left speaker. That right there is the main board. It looks like a motherboard because basically it is a computer with multiple inputs on it. Um, that being said, this part I will need to remove. It just has some screws in it, screws attached in the various places. And then you remove that out like I say, power supply, no need to mess with that because that works fine. Um, so this will get removed. I found a vendor that will take, you have to send them your main board. They will do whatever necessary repairs and then they will send it back to you. And that is the, it's a slightly more expensive option, but it comes with a warranty. So if in the event, you know, whatever they do does not fix the issue or it happens again. You can then file a warranty claim for them to do the necessary repairs. Uh, the other option would be to buy just the main board and swap it out. Uh, but that does not come with a warranty. So it's possible you could buy a replacement main board and that main board, you know, only works for six months and then you're back in the same situation again. That being said, I talked with the customer and the customer agreed, just get the one with the warranty and he's okay with waiting about, you know, a week or two, you know, the amount of time it takes to send that off for them to do the work and then send it back. Um, so that's what the option I'm going to go with. Um, so that being said, uh, yeah, the next portion of this video that you'll see, it'll be sometime in the future after I've sent this off and gotten things back. All right, so it has been about a week and a half to two weeks or so. The board has been repaired. Um, I had it sent off and now it is back. Um, it actually got back a little bit sooner than expected because the delivery was expected for a Monday and actually showed up on a Saturday. So that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get this put in. So I put the TV back together and so uh, what I'm going to do is to now take it apart because I've had other stuff going on in this workspace. So I had to make sure everything stayed together. In addition to, I got another TV to look at that needs some servicing. So this one, we'll go ahead and get this back in, power it on, make sure that it works. And then once we do that, uh, it will be back off to the customer. And then in a future video, I will be disassembling that one, figuring out what is wrong with it. 
All right, so let me go ahead and get started and taking all of the screws out so that the board can be reinstalled. Got the updated board installed. I haven't tested it yet, but the screws are in and all of the cable connections are in. Everything looks to be fitting properly and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to go ahead before I put the back cover on, I'm going to hold it up and test it to make sure that it does power on and function properly before I put it all the way back together. All right, got the TV flipped over. It is plugged in, as you can see from the red indicator. I have a high sense remote. I don't have the high sense remote that came with this TV. Uh, the customer was unable to find it, but I do have a high sense remote, so I'm going to use that to power it on. All right, got a blinking, the red light is blinking. I don't know if that, okay. I know when you first turned it on, it did blink. However, we have black screen, which is not good. And I know it's difficult to see, but the backlight is on. Let's see if we can. All right, so you can see the backlight is on and the TV Although it may be difficult to see on the camera, but the, that right there. Okay, so you can kind of see it a little bit in certain spots, but the whole backlight is on all the way around, but there is no image. Um, so that is slightly concerning. Let me double check the connections on here. So I'm going to actually go ahead and unplug it, double check the connections, and then try it again. I took the back off the TV again and uh, reseated the connection for the um for the display it's kind of difficult to show this while holding the tv up but the ribbon cable that is not this ribbon cable right here but this ribbon cable that goes over to the motherboard comes down and then goes to this board here which then splits off into two so then you have the left side of the tv and the right side of the tv and this is basically like a graphics card uh, this board here. It's like a graphics card, if you will, with that being the motherboard. So after reseating the connection, it does have everything working. The customer will have to reconfigure the TV because pretty much they had to uh, get rid of the chip on the TV. Um, that being said, though, it's still managing. And I guess this may be stuff that was cashed in. Um, Okay, yeah, it's, <laughs> hold on a second. All right, I managed to get the store mode to be quiet for a moment. So uh, apparently it goes in the store mode when you set it up by, and haven't configured it or anything else of that nature. Um, but back to what I was saying, uh, so the defaults, uh, pretty much it has a brand new or a replacement. I'm not gonna necessarily say it's a brand new chip, but it does have a replacement chip in it. And thus with that replacement chip, it will have uh, none of these settings because I do not believe they copied any of that configuration stuff over. That said, the customer will have to reload all of their apps and usernames, passwords, and so forth, and reconnect it, but they also do have a working TV now. 